of Asheville Pinball Museum. I own it with my husband. How many pinball machines do you have? We have, between both of our locations, probably around 100. Do you have different other games? We do. We have a bunch of video games, too, now. A lot of younger people... Um, I sounded like I was 800, didn't I? <laughs> a lot of younger people can be um, a bit more drawn to video games because it's what they're used to. Um, but we have found that a lot of younger people end up really enjoying pinball because they can interact with it. It's not just a controller, where for me the controller is kind of fun because it reminds me of the old Nintendo and the PlayStation when it first came out when I was very young. Um, so that's kind of nice to see because a lot of children tend to gravitate towards the video games and then they hear the dings and see the lights and realize they can actually touch and inter interact with the game because the pinball machine you can actually give a little kind of a little bit of a nudge and it changes the direction of the ball and it's, it can cause some big bruises if you're too rough so don't ever push them too hard. <laughs> What's one of the oldest ones? Oh goodness. I am actually terrible with remembering the names. My husband is really good about that. I tend to look at the art, honestly. I'm pretty sure, um, it, at least it used to be Humpty Dumpty, which is a really cool game that it starts out at the top, and as you hit this target in the back, it slowly drops him down and breaks, which is actually kind of morbid when you think about it. It's really neat, too. What's one of your favorite ones? Like I said, I tend to look at the art, so I walk around and go, oh, wait, that one's really pretty. Oh, that's right, I forgot that one made a chicken sound. Um, but I really like horror movies in the real world when I'm not here, so I tend to gravitate towards those games. I really love the Dracula game um, from the new Bram Stoker's, well, it's not new, but Bram Stoker's Dracula, and also Phantom of the Opera. Unfortunately, they're at our Hendersonville location, but here we have a um, Elvira, and right behind you, we're working on is an Adams family. So th those I tend to kind of gravitate toward, but it's also fun to play the ACDC one that suddenly belts out Iron Man. Wait, that's not the awesome one. <laughs> I'm an awful. I do. I really do. I end up, honestly, I can tell you where you're supposed to aim and what will give you the most points, but I tend to just play. I hit the ball, it goes where it goes, I hope for the best. I either, I either do amazing and get really excited or I don't and then I just do another ball. So I'm not amazing, but it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Do a lot of people Yeah, it gets more and more every year. Um, throughout the year, our population that comes to visit kind of waxes and wanes depending on if there's some sort of festival here in Asheville or something going on in Hendersonville. But every year, it tends to go up. Um, the day after Thanksgiving, when we opened, we were we had to start a waiting list in, in line because so many people came, um, which is wonderful. We feel kind of bad when people can't get in, but the people that are already in, it's not really fair to them, we feel, if they can't move and actually enjoy the games they're trying to play. If you're bouncing off of somebody else, 
you know, bumping into your family is one thing. A complete stranger because you can't reach a machine is another. So we try to keep it where you can actually enjoy being here. You know, a lot of people ask us why we call ourselves a museum. Um, arcades tended to maybe have a pinball machine, but it was always broken. Um, but a pinball museum only had pinball machines. And since we started with only pinball, that made us a museum. But also, my husband and I tend to look at it as each one of these has a piece of history in it. As you walk in, you can watch the evolution of our culture, actually. Um, and you can see where, you know, culturally we realized, hey, you know, that's not really cool. We need to go into this direction. So you actually, they are pieces of history that you can look at. It shows art styles throughout history. And we kind of look at it as if you walked into the Smithsonian and could touch everything, it'd be pretty much the same. So would you consider us a museum if we had you pay the same price, but we put up ropes and wouldn't let you touch it, you know? That would be a terrible thing to do with all this beautiful art and history. Is we like ten bucks for you? No. I did not. I, um, my husband is a little bit older than me, so he has a few more years of, of gaming under his belt. I, um, when I started really playing in, in arcades and games is when the old original Nintendo system came out. So I tended to be drawn a little bit more towards that until I met my husband. But growing up, you know, yeah, I just, I was one of those people that just whapped the buttons on the side and hoped for the best and you can at least kind of aim and hope for the best. <laughs> oh, that's what